rulings on abortion and immigration, but we have a problem. Uh, Byron, good morning. Um, the problem is, how is this going to work? Well, good morning. Well, it's going to work uh, clumsily at best, probably. Not only do we have a shorthanded Supreme Court, uh, eight justices in most cases because of Justice Scalia's untimely death, yeah. but in one of the big cases, affirmative action case coming out of uh, uh, the state of Texas, we have uh, seven justices because Justice Kagan is recused because that case goes all the way back to her time in the Solicitor General's office. So that should pr- prove interesting in that case as well. And that is, uh, what, a, a white student's challenge to the University of Texas on racial yes, preferences? The, yes, the University of Texas, this is the second time it's been up to the United States Supreme Court. The first time the court sent it back saying that uh, they couldn't tell from the record just how much weight the University of Texas placed on race in that case. Uh, but they were very skeptical of the University of Texas and other public universities using race as a heavy, uh, weighting race heavily in a, as a factor for admission. And so the conventional wisdom was when they took the case a second time that they were going to make some sort of sweeping pronouncement on affirmative action in public education, uh, especially universities and colleges yeah. across the country. But now with only eight justices, you expect the majority to be less ambitious and, and prove, maybe issue a narrower holding. Yeah. And uh, this court has been somewhat uh, unpredictable at times. Well, uh, a lot of people don't realize that Justice Scalia was actually uh, on sided with the, quote, liberal members of the court in a lot of First Amendment, a lot of Fourth Amendment search and seizure issues, and a lot of other things. So there could be a lot of mix-ups with respect to the lineups. I mean, we know the traditional lineups on abortion and some uh, gay rights issues, but on other cases it was very unpredictable, and I suspect this the li- this last couple weeks is going to be uh, one of the craziest, most mixed-up, unpredictable uh, uh, lineups in the court's opinions that yeah. we've seen in a long time. Now, the issue of uh, of abortion goes, correct me if I'm wrong, it's Texas, and it's about certain restrictions on doctors uh, who, who can and cannot perform abortions there? Two specifically, uh, Texas passed a law that requires uh, doctors that perform abortions to have admitting privileges at hospitals within 30 miles, and in some cases they can't get those credentials, so uh, the argument is is that it's precluding, uh, it's closing abortion clinics. The other one was that abortion clinics needed to be updated to comply with ambulatory surgical centers, which takes a lot. It's a big difference between a uh, clinic and an ambulatory surgical center. So the argument in that, uh, on that one goes as well. It's going to force the closure of all but about six abortion clinics in the entire state of Texas. Wow. And, uh, and so the Supreme Court's going to take a look and see if Texas went a little too far on that. Uh, and then there's the immigration. Another big one is the immigration issue. President Obama's administra- er, is, uh, immigration policy, and this involves children, too, right? That's correct. I think this is probably the most court watchers think this is the biggest opinion. Of course, it's the most the, uh, opinion that deals mostly with constitutional law and separation of powers. Uh, I think that the, the speculation is that Chief Justice Roberts is writing the opinion because it's a big opinion that he's probably in the majority. That does not bode well, I don't think, for President Obama in this case. And the real issue in this case is not just whether or not President Obama can decide who to deport and when, but also whether or not he can change individual status from being here unlawfully to lawful status, because if he can do that, it basically gives them the right to government benefits, including work papers and driver's licenses. And I think the court may hold that that's just a bridge too far and really requires an act of Congress to change someone's lawful status. If that happens, that would be a huge blow to President Obama and his administration's immigration plans. All right, Byron, uh, when are these decisions expected to be announced, sometime this we, week or next week? We have two opinion days left, so we'll either get them this Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 okay. o'clock Central, or the following Monday, June 27th at 10 Eastern. Okay, so probably a combination of, uh, of both days they'll be trickling out here. So, All right, Got interesting it. stuff. Byron, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, uh, Byron Henry. That is uh, crazy as they're looking at, you know, the chance of these 4-4 decisions. And uh, there's some really big stuff out there, big, important stuff. Yet Washington can't seem to get together on anything. So you won't see any change on the, the Supreme Court until after the election, right?